welcome everybody in this week's seminar. It's my uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, our uh, today's speaker, uh, Van Long Ma from uh, Institute of uh, Semiconductors, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So uh, Van Long is a pure, I guess, theoretical physicist specializing in, in many areas in quantum information, quantum technologies, but among other things like quantum decoherence in speeding systems, quantum control, uh, uh, quantum measurement theory and uh, error correction. And today he'll be telling us about his recent work on, uh, as far as I understand, how uh, uh, sequential generalized measurements can mimic, uh, uh, can be used to simulate proper projective measurements. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the screen is yours. Uh, thanks for joining us. Okay. Okay. So, so first, uh, I, I would like to thank Michelle for the invitation and the introduction. And so it's a great pleasure for me to, to, to present our, um, our recent works. And uh, so, so, so that as, the, as Michelle said, so the topic is about the sequential generalized measurement. So, so we just, we mainly try to reveal the underlying mathematical structures of the, of the sequential generalized measurements or sequential PoV VMs. So first, uh, let me first, let me introduce, uh, introduce the references and at the same time, my collaborators. So first, uh, first the so this talk is mainly about uh, the mainly based on the first reference, and uh, where the collaborators include the Professor Su Shenli uh, from Institute of Semiconductors and Chinese Academy of Sciences, and uh, Professor Ren Bao Liu from the Chinese Chinese University of Hong Kong. And uh, so this is a recent work. So, but uh, this work actually is is inspired by our earlier work, which is. Which was done in about uh, four years ago when I was supposed to working with Professor Ren Liu. And uh, so, in that work, we also studied uh, a simple case of the sequential weak measurements and find some interesting uh, relations with uh, phase transitions in statistical uh, physics. And uh, also, uh, an earlier work is uh, an experimental work, which which is a collaboration with the experimental group at the Institute of Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, which is include the uh, Professor Gan Qin Liu and uh, Professor Xin Yu Pan. So, so since this talk is mainly about the quantum, the quantum sequential measurements, so before that, that's, uh, let me just uh, first uh, uh, briefly introduce the quantum measurement. So we know that the, any quantum system uh, can have uh, various kinds of evolutions. So for a closed quantum system, the, the typical evolution is the unitary evolution. But if we want to uh, ob obtain some useful information from a, a quantum system, we need to make quantum measurements on this system. So, so we, can look, we can see that the quantum measurements can be regarded as a process. That is, we can retrieve the classical information from a quantum state. So suppose, suppose we have this, uh, so suppose we have a uh, 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 quantum state, which is, which is a row. And uh, we, if we perform a quantum measurement, we can describe it as a, as a black box. So this black box can outcome, can have different outcomes. Suppose we can have R, Different outcomes, and uh, for for each outcome, we we have a respective probability, the pi, and uh, the summation with the different probability uh, should be equal to one. Means that the, uh, so so the, so mean that all the all the results should uh, should uh, uh, should uh, should be equal. Uh, uh, means that they are distributed according to some probability distribution. And for each result, the, the, the quantum states will, will jump to a, a state which depend on dependence on the measurement results. That is, the quantum states will change from rho to rho i. And therefore, if we obtain the outcome i. 
So the traditional description of the quantum measurements uh, in quantum mechanics is through the projective measurements. So projective measurements are described by the commission office, who are also called is uh, observable. So we know that a commission office can be diagonalized and with uh, eigenvalues being zero. So now suppose we have this observable H, so we can diagonalize this and uh, written it as in this form. Here the PR is a rank one projector. Now, uh, now we can so now we can look at the process of measurements as just a statistically projects the quantum state into the different orthogonal projections of the observable. And, uh, and since the different projections, the summation of them is equal to the identity operators. So it, this ensures that uh, the probability to obtain the, all the outcomes will be equal to one. And the, and the quantum states uh, dependent on the outcome will, will, is given by this expression and the probability is given by the trace of this to R. So this is the projective measurements. So, but we know that the general quantum measurements can be actually should be described by the POVMs. So for a POVM, so uh, they are described by a collection of measurement operators. So this, these measurement operators, they should satisfy the completeness equations, meaning that the MR dagger and MR, so the summation of this should be equal to the identity operators. So this condition ensures that the probability to obtain the different measurement results is equal to one. They are just similar to the case of the projective measurements, but a generalization of it. And the, and the quantum states, uh, our quantum states of the system will just jump from rho to rho i and uh, with the expression described by this which is uh, we, 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 just, uh, we just apply the MR uh, from, uh, and MR dagger from the left and from the right, and then uh, just normalize the state. Okay, so, so we have the basic, basically we have two different kinds of, of measurements, but, uh, but this may, uh, so the, which is just uh, the PMs and the POVMs. So, so generally we can see that the PMs is the, uh, Special kinds of of, of a POVMs, but but actually, so the relation, the general relation between these two kinds of measurements, kinds of a, a very interesting fundamental problem. So you see that a, a very famous result is that the NIMAX theorem. So this in this theorem, they say that any POVM can be implemented as a PM on an enlarged Hilbert space. That means that so if we want to uh, realize some kind of POVM, we can just uh, use a larger, uh, larger Hilbert space, which means that we may add some ancillar, ancillar system to, cap, uh, to maybe to couple with, with, the, with the original quantum system and to form an enlarged Hilbert space and just to make a projective measurement on this, on this whole system. So, so another another relation is actually uh, done by uh, these recent works, which is which is uh, which is from the group of the Michel. So, so the, in these papers, the the main conclusion is that the POVMs can also be simulated with PMs with just a classical randomness, the post selections and uh, a single uh, just a single ancillary qubits. So, so why, why, we, why we want to uh, simulate the POVMs with PMs? Because, because POVMs, in some cases, they can out, outperform the PMs. For example, in the quantum tomography or quantum state discrimination or estimation. So, so it's important that so we can realize some kind of normal the POVMs with some available PMs. Um, sorry, sorry, oh. uh, sorry, if I, don't, if I can just jump in. I mean, you're very kind to mention those those, those works of of ours, 
uh, yeah. I mean, there are many, I mean, there are some other, of, like, related by other authors, not only us worked on that, but thanks. But, like, just one technical comment, like, in those works, okay. we, uh, we focus on, uh, you know, uh, on, let's say, destructive measurements, so we didn't consider what happens, like, to, to a state after the measurement, right? Okay. We, we just yeah. did statistics. So, uh, in a sense, yeah, I mean, like uh, for, for, for instruments or for, for uh, non-destructive measurements, it's uh, still sort of open, I would say. Uh, I mean, okay, the, yeah, your work yeah. part is about it. Yeah, but, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you for comment. Yeah, so, so actually, so the, the reference list is I cannot, cannot cover all the references, so I just uh, just select sure. some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm. So, uh, so in the opposite directions, so so can we use the uh, so can we use the PVMs to simulate PMs? So this is also an open question. So a recent a recent development, which is done by the by the researchers from the University of Bristol, they, they say that so the the results show that they can actually simulate PMs with many copies of the POVMs, which means that they use they use some kind of the spatial spatial extension of the uh, spatial extension to to simulate the PM with POVMs. While well, in the other in the other uh, direction, so we can use some temporal extension to for the simulation of the PM with POVM. That is, we use the sequential POVMs kind of to simulate the PM. So actually, there has been uh, many references which is uh, which is which was devoted to this uh, uh, this line of researches, and uh, there are some partial evidence based on the uh, gradual state collapse or the statistics of the measurement results, which shows that in some case, uh, for example, for the, in some cases, they can, they can use the sequential uh, POVMs to, to produce, for example, the same measurement statistics as, as just uh, a single PMs. But actually, the, to, to our knowledge, the general relations between the the sequential POVMs and PMs, uh, they are still not quite clear. So in this talk, for, and in this talk, I will just try to try to reveal the relations between the PMs and sequential POVMs by just from the basic uh, mathematical models. And uh, so this is the outline. So first, I will I will I will briefly introduce the POVMs and. Uh, uh, which can be described by the quantum channels, and um, and in second parts, I uh, I just I will, I will introduce a uh, very um, very special kind of the POVMs with, with normal and the commuting measurement operators. Although this is a kind of a restriction on the kind of quantum measurements, but uh, later we will show that it's actually describe a quite general classes of quantum channels. And uh, and then I will try to uh, try to um, try to uh, investigate. So what will happen if we apply the sequential PVMs with with such normal and commuting measurement operators? And uh, we find some interesting results. That is, as we find the the, the classical typicality will, uh, will appear in such sequential PVMs. And finally, I will discuss the physical realization. And the and these applications. Now let's see. So 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 the P, how POVMs can be described by the quantum channels. So quantum channels are also called the completely positive and trace preserving quantum maps, or also called the CPTP maps. So so previously, when we introduced the POVMs, we mean that. We uh, so ma mainly talk about this uh, selective POVM. That means that we have, when, after we make measurements, we, we obtain the specific measurement result. But if we do not, that we do not want to record the measurement results, so we have the, we will have the non-selective 
pureums. So for non-selective pureums, they can be, be described by such by such a quantum channel. So so this in this quantum channel, we just uh, we just uh, uh, make a summation of the different different uh, uh, the different uh, quantum states dependent on the different measurements outcome. And uh, and write it in such a cross representation. So so for such a map to to be a CBTP map or a quantum channel, so the 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 set of measurement operators they should they should satisfy this completeness relations. Okay. So so this is the this is the quantum channel representation of the of the PVMs. But uh, when uh, but uh, but the quantum channels actually have very different has several different representations. So so the cross representation is the one that we mostly often use. Uh, but but actually we have three other different kinds of representation, including the Choi representation, the natural representation, and the sign ring representation. And the, in this talk, I will I will just I will introduce uh, I will use three different kinds of representations. That is the cross representation, the natural representation, and the sign ring representation. I, I will show that so by interchanging between different representations, we can we can just uh, uh, we can we can uh, extract the well, different insights, for example, on the sequential uh, sequential application of quantum channels. So now, now next, let's just look at what's the natural representations of a quantum channel. So to introduce this concept, we need to introduce a related concept called the tail of the Schmitt space, which is the vector space of the linear operators in the Hilbert space, uh, equipped with the HS norm. Now let's look at a general operator X, which is the operator in the uh, in some in some d-dimensional Hilbert space. So th this is just a d by d square matrix. So we can partition this matrix according to the its row. That is, we can we can um, denote its first row as x one and its final row as x d, and we can we can reshape this operate from a d by d matrix to a single to a column vector. Uh, the column vector is, is d squared by one. So how to do this? We just uh, take the transpose of x one uh, from x one to x d and just this them this them in the sequential. And uh, by reshaping the uh, resh make this reshaping, we can use the uh, the, the most often used the Euclidean norm of the vector space to de define a similar uh, a similar norm for the for the uh, for the operator. That is, we define the HS norm as a uh, as this as the, uh, so so the, that's, this is actually is not a, sorry this is not a HS norm it's just HS in a inner product. So so the HS inner product of the X and the Y operator is just uh, equal to the inner product uh, between the corresponding corresponding the, uh, the, the corresponding vectors and uh, and they can be uh, expressed as the trace of the Y dagger and the X. So with this HS space, so we can we can represent the left and right multiplications of, a, of a, a, for example, a density matrix by operator x and y. We, we can we can just represent these operations as a single uh, as a single tensor product of x and y transpose, which uh, which is a tensor product operator acting on the on a single uh, single vector. Which is correspond to a density matrix. That is, we we can we can uh, uh, we can use some kind of a single matrix to represent the both the left and the right multiplications. In this way, we can uh, we can represent the quantum channel in a uh, in a quite simple uh, in a quite a direct form. In this form, it's actually the just the called the natural representation of a quantum channel. So for this, in this natural representation, we see that the quantum channel has been has been uh, reduced to uh, just a single matrix. 
that act him on a single uh, vector. So, so the advantage of such uh, of the natural representation is that uh, so if we apply some sequential sequential application of the channels, we can just uh, uh, multiply the corresponding uh, matrix corresponding co matrix uh, corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the channels. That is, we just uh, take the power of this uh, of this uh, of this matrix, and then we we can we can use these properties to uh, to to study the uh, the, the sequential pure variance. So what's what's the uh, and reveal the underlying structure. So now let's make an important assumption that is we assume that the pure variants all have the normal and the commuting measurement operators. That is for normal operators, they mean that the uh, the m alpha and m alpha dagger they commute within each other. They commute. And uh, also the M alpha and M beta they also commute. So this uh, so this uh, assumption is uh, kind is a kind of a, um, a strong a strong restriction. But we will later later show that this this actually uh, such kind of restriction is uh, they actually describe a, a very uh, a very typical case for the Q and D measurements. So that is a quantum non demolition measurement. So, so with this assumption, we, uh, we can see that so all the measurement operators, that is the, all the different, the R different measurement operators, they can be simultaneously diagonalized in you know, also as a normal basis of the quantum system. That is, we can, we can represent this, uh, this measurement operators in such a matrix form. So we can uh, make the following uh, notation uh, uh, key notion. So first, uh, first uh, this is the uh, the first is m. M denotes is just a column vector, which is uh, uh, which is, uh, which inc includes the different the r different measurement operators, and the c is uh, is is an r uh, is an r by d matrix, and uh, uh, it's a com complex matrix. And finally, the P is a column vector, which is which which in, uh, includes the D different projection. The uh, the projection is has a O a rank one. And uh, here we make an important partition. That is, we partition the matrix C according to its uh, columns. That is, so we can denote the the matrix C just as this. Uh, it, um, as this in this form, just in, just it just can consist of the all its columns. We will see that actually the all the property of this uh, the, the pure VMs can be described by by this matrix C. So so now let's first look at so what's what's the completeness relations in, uh, uh, imply on the restriction uh, on the restriction of the form of the matrix C. That is uh, for the completeness uh, relations, which means that uh, the m dagger and m is equal to the identity operators. So for this uh, restriction, we can make some direct um, calculations, and I will show it shows that actually the so that for the different column vectors, the, for the ci and cj, so actually the the different column vectors they are just a set. Of a unit vectors in an R different in an R different dimensional complex Euclidean space, and uh, and uh, so this can be easily seen from this uh, expression. So we, we can uh, we can just uh, grab this. And uh, but uh, but an important observation is that uh, so these are just uh, uh, different unit vectors, but they are not necessarily orthogonal to each other. So this is in contrast to the to an isometry. So now, so for uh, for example, if we assume that so if this M and this P they are not uh, they are not formed by these operators, that if they are formed by some complex numbers, so so we can have an isometry. The isometry means that uh, the different column vectors should be orthogonal to each other. 
But here we can we, we see that so this P, this P they are formed by the projection operator. So so these projection operators they can uh, they they are orthogonal to each other. So 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 this condition means that this this C I and C J so these different polynomial vectors of the matrix C. They can be arbitrary as long as they are unit vectors. So, so this is we will see that this is an interesting observation of the of the form of the matrix C. And uh, with this form of the matrix C, we can just uh, directly derive the, the natural representation of the quantum channel or corresponding to the, uh, the non-selective pure VM. We can we can write such a very uh, such a simple expression. So, so here we see we can see that so so actually the the quantum channel in the net, uh, uh, in the Hilbert uh, in the HS space that is a natural representation is just a diagonal operator and uh, it's is uh, eigenvectors uh, eigenvector is just ij ij just correspond to to the you know, vectorized, uh, vectorized uh, form of the of the operator i cat i and the bridge, and these eigenvalues is just a c dagger c i c jagger c uh, c jagger c g dagger and c i is just uh, the uh, Euclidean inner products between the uh, unit vector c j and c i. So according to the Cauchy uh, Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So, so all the eigenvalues will lie within a complex plane in the complex plane. I think it means that so the absolute value of all the uh, eigenvalues will be smaller than one. And, uh, and we can actually uh, classify this, this, this eigenvalues in three different kinds. The first is the fixed points. Means that the fixed point means that the eigenvalue are equal to one, and we can identify this uh, this fixed point as the point which is when, when the i equal to j, and so when, it, when in this case the c j dagger and c j is equal to one, because the c j is the unit vector, and the rotating point, rotating rotating point means that the c i dagger and c j equal to some some face factor. The face factor uh, can be can be the case if the C I and C J they differ by some just uh, some face. And also some decaying points. Decaying points mean that the C I and C J they are they are different. They are, they are not they are not differ, they do not differ by some face factor. So actually so so actually so for quantum channels uh, it has been shown in literatures that all the uh, so so all the eigenvalues for the natural replication of quantum channel they all lie within within the unit uh, unit circle because uh, contractive property of the quantum channel. For details, you can refer to this guided tour uh, in this uh, guided tour of the Michel work. But so here we um, but here we show that for but such a, a special type of the POVM with normal and commuting measurement operators, we can we can write all its eigenvalues as eigenvectors in a very uh, very simple and neat form. And uh, so this is a very interesting uh, interesting uh, thing. Now let's look at some special cases for this uh, for this PO, this POVM. First is the projective measurements. So what we assume here is the von Neumann measurements mean that all the projection operators have a rank one. So we can write its natural representation. The natural representation, we can see that it's, uh, all its eigenvalues are equal to one, means that it only have fixed points, means that the, the, the eigenvalue just in this, in this point. Another example is the uh, unitary evolution. Unitary evolution, uh, we can, uh, is, can be represented in form, and so so the unitary operator can be diagonalized, always diagonalized so with its eigenvalues being some face factor. So 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 for unitary evolutions, so all its eigenvalues are either 
uh, fixed points were rot rotating points. Well, the fixed point means that if the fixed point is a uh, equal the case so when i equal to j or phi i equal to phi j, and the rotating point means that the phi not uh, equal to phi j. Now let's um, look uh, at uh, sorry, sorry, can I have a, a very simple question? Can you move back? Sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. So just uh, uh, if I understand well in those, so, so sorry, uh, unitary evolution is just one example of this formally, let's say, uh, project. Sorry, I just want to like, so, so this unitary evolution is not an example of a P of N that you study, it's some, or it fits in that example. Maybe I, I missed something very basic here. Because mm. uh, so you, mean... Cause you... okay, mm. it depends on like how many. Mm. I see. It depends how many. Uh, I okay. I understand. So formal. Okay, j just very simply. Yeah, sorry. Like, because uh, you, uh, you, you don't, you don't assume anything about how many uh, Krauss operators you have. So in particular, you can have a single Krauss operator, and then uh, you just have m just conjugation by some unitary. So unitary evolution is a formal case of your uh, non, let's say, non-projective measurement. If I, do I, do I understand this uh, right then or? Uh, yeah, so so for the for the natural reputation, it's just the, the, the tensor product of, of M alpha you and, and you the, the conjugate of uh, M alpha. Yeah, so it's- I uh, see, yeah, the, I see. Yeah, because because you, you you can see that so the for the for the HF space for the Hilbert uh, mm -hmm. sorry so the Hilbert uh, Smith space sure so the, so this is actually so for this left and right multiplication is x tensor bar of course y of course transpose yeah sure just it's a matter maybe of terminology because like if one because like formally unitary evolution one would consider it to be kind of very different than doing some actual measurement to your system i mean in us i mean i know that formally it uh it's it's yeah, it fits sure, with sure. the pollution uh yeah. but mm. sure uh okay but here so here we i, I can see that it just non-selective that's it means that we we do not uh, select the results we just uh, mm -hmm. we just some older results so the unit of evolution can be seen as a special case Okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, so so now let's see. Uh, so now let's look at, uh, look closely at this, this structures of the POVM measurements, uh, POVM with, uh, the, with the normal and the commercial measurement operators. And uh, and so we have we have previously obtained this natural reputation for such POVMs. And now let's further classify this uh, this structure of the matrix C. Uh, so so actually so so the restrictions on the matrix C is that is that uh, is that uh, the different column vectors that all the column vectors are just the unit vectors, but uh, this is the only restriction. So so we can classify the, the structure of the C into this form. So, so in this form, we can see that, so we can uh, just uh, uh, identify the, all, the, all the column vectors which differ by some phase vectors and classify them into one category. And uh, we just, uh, we just uh, uh, classify all the categories and uh, and in this, if we make this classification, we can write, actually write this matrix representations in, in some compact form. For com compact form means that we can, we can actually uh, uh, write the column vectors, column vector of this, uh, this uh, rank one projections as, as some kind of general uh, some kind of general projection operators. Here, this the PK tiled PK tiled is uh, just uh, uh, just equal to this expression. So, so it's uh, it can be regarded as a unitary operation in some in some subspace of the economy system. And if the phi j are equal to 
all, if all the fat equal to zero is just a, is reduced, uh, it will be reduced to a projection of it. And with this compact form, and we can uh, we can further simplify this, this expression of this quantum channel for, for the pure VM. And, uh, and now let's let's look at the, the structures of this of this pure VMs. So, so for this pure VMs, we can have this fixed point, rotating point, and decaying point. So, so to to have a um, to have a clear uh, to have a clear observation of the different points, we can look at uh, instead of the Hilbert space, we can look at the in the operator space of the quantum system. That is, we make the identification uh, that is IJ correspond to the cat I and the J, and uh, so for the fixed points, they usually correspond to to the to the operator to the operator basis that is at the diagonal diagonal of this operator space, and uh, for the rotating points, uh, rotating points they they all, uh, always uh, they often correspond to, for example, for for this uh, for this subspace which has a dimension more than one. So in in the octagonal positions. They often correspond to the decaying point, and the, all the decaying points are like uh, they often they are often located in, uh, in in the positions which are not this uh, which are not in this block diagonal in this uh, different diagonal blocks, and it, which means that if this uh, this position are not not in, not in these blocks, they are often decaying points. Okay, so so now we have this natural representation of the quantum channel. So so we can uh, we can uh, so we can directly uh, look at the sequential uh, application of this cha these channels. So actually, the 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 asymptotics of quantum channels has been has been studied recently, and uh, and uh, may, for example, this this twenty nineteen. Paper by Victor Albert. They studied the uh, asymptotics of quantum channels, uh, for example, the conserved quantities. And um, they mainly, uh, it mainly focused on what information can be preserved. So uh, after the uh, after uh, after some infinite applications of the quantum channel. So so as it will, uh, it has been shown that the behaviors of this. Of these sequential quantum channels uh, will be determined mainly by the fixed points and the rotating points, uh, because because the decaying points, decaying points, they they actually so after the sequential applications, they their, their influence will uh, will vanish, so they will eventually vanish. Now now for our case for our for our case for the sequential pure VMs with this with the normal and the commuting operators. So we can look at the uh, look at the uh, asymptotics of these channels. We just um, uh, we just uh, takes m's power of this natural gravitation of the channels, and uh, and takes the limit when the m is uh, is, a, is a tends to be infinite. And uh, since here we make an important assumption that is we. Uh, because because the uh, that, that is we just uh, first we we just uh, do not consider the uh, rotating points for the illustration. We just uh, consider the fixed points. That means uh, for the pk pk value that is just equal to pk. It's just equal to the uh, the projection operator and some subspace. And in this case, for the uh, for the asymptotic application of the quantum channels, we, we will see clearly that the uh, the quantum channel will be reduced uh, to a projective measurements because because for the other parts the other parts they they correspond to the decaying points and decaying points when m uh, when m is equal to in, uh, when m is very large the decaying points will have no contribution so so they so this channel will be just reduced to to a channel corresponding to the projective measurements so if we look at Look at it in the operator space. We will find that 
So after, uh, after the after symptomatic application of the quantum channels, so uh, so all the quantum information uh, will be uh, all the quantum information that that is preserved is in these different blocks, but but all the um, but all the quantum information uh, between these different uh, between these different subspaces that is the coherence between these different subspaces they are completely destroyed. Uh, uh, sorry, can I can I ask uh, uh, what what is like the like because you made this very important assumption that you don't have those uh, let's say rota mm -hmm. like rotating points. What is like the physical basis of this assumption? So you do you exclude some kind of like unitary evolution or like how to sort of intuitively I understand this 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 assumption. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. that's a good question. So 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 actually so the unitary evolution can be uh, can be considered the but, but actually so uh, so I, I, I just uh, only consider fixed point because it's simple to uh, to illustrate. Uh, but but actually, if we if we can see the unitary evolution, and uh, the tricky point is that uh, so when you take the asymptotic limits, so so it will not be converged. But but it will not not be a problem for the quantum finance application. Right. But what if you made some sort of ergodic, I mean, ergodic average, like time average for, uh, you know, over like rather than looking at the limits of, uh, uh, of the channel as uh, like M goes to infinity, you take like you average over the evolution steps. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. So maybe then so... the basis would go away or. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. So, uh, so actually, the literature. So they have, for example, they they have used uh, some kind of uh, some kind of different approach. So, for example, they 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 make uh, assumptions on the M. For example, they may the M may take uh, some uh, specific uh, sequence of of the integers, but not uh, all the integers. So in this case. Uh, in this case, the, um, in the asymptotic limits, they may be converged to a uh, to a single value, uh, to to a single channel. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, but actually, I think this is a kind of uh, kind of not really that they are not the most important thing because because uh, because uh, uh, in practice we we only consider the finite application of the quantum channels. We don't. Uh, sure. Ju just yeah. to clarify, I I meant what I meant is not to assume anything about m, but rather let's say sum from m equal to one up to some large capital M, and like divide like like you know take the average over the actions oh, of the channel. Oh, I see. I see your point. This. Yeah. Then perhaps though those, those rotating points would go. I yeah. mean, okay. Yeah, Not yeah. That I is see very point. physical, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you. It's interesting, but uh, but actually in practical experiments, they they they, they typically take a they fix the M and make and just uh, just do the repetitions. Yeah, so. Uh, so your point is uh, we can average O M, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's okay, just a comment. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry yeah, for... yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. So, so we have this. Uh, uh, now we have this uh, correspondence between the sequential POVMs and the uh, and the PMs. Now, now a natural question is that so, so which kind of, so which sequence of this selective POVM produces a specific projection, uh, projection, means which means that so if we look at the quantum channel, the phi, the phi actually consists of r different paths, which is just a different, the r different uh, super operators. Mm -hmm. was a linear operator in the HS space. And, uh, and so, so for the, for the, for the sequential sequence of the POVMs, for example, we take this, uh, 
this sequence. So the sequence means that so M1 and M2 to MR, they, uh, so the number of the, uh, the number of the, this means that the number of the appearances in, in this sequence. Um, so we, so this question is that, so which kind of this, so uh, this POVM sequence correspond to a specific, uh, specific projection. Can we have some, some interest? Can we have uh, conclusions about this? So, so actually, so we can, uh, we can uh, get some um, intuition, get some uh, inspiration from the theory of classical typicality. So, in classical typicality. They mainly care about the following problem. So, so actually, before, before I, 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 I see, I, I talk about this, uh, this introduction, I, I, may, I may briefly introduce the theory of classical typicality. So, so actually, the classical typicality is a very important concept in the classical information theory. So, it's mainly, it was mainly development, uh, developed by by the Shannon, Shannon and, the, and this concept of typicality is closely related to the Shannon entropy. And, this, and the classical typicality uh, is also the theoretical foundation for the, uh, for the compression of the classical information. And this, so it's, uh, it's very important to, to the modern information uh, technology. And, um, and it's also important to, uh, to to the understanding of the uh, of the process of the summonization and um, uh, and also also uh, in the statistical mechanics is also a very important concept. Now, now what, what does this classical typicality uh, mainly care about? So it's ma they mainly care about this uh, simple problem. So suppose we have uh, a random variable x. So x can take are different values with the corresponding probability the p uh, the p1 from p1 to pr now then, now suppose we generate uh, m different uh, m different independent and uh, and identical realizations of this random variable so so we can have different sequences uh, for the uh, for the for the final result so now the, the question is now the question is for if we if the m is equal to one m is very large then what's the most probable sequence of such random variable and this is a very interesting question actually the the classical typicality can tell us that that for the sets of all the sequences. So actually, the most important is just a typical set of such sequences. So what's the typical set? So for the typical set, so we can see that so so the uh, so for we can have this notation the f from f one to f r. So f i uh, for example f one denotes the relative frequency of the first outcome in this in this sequence. So so if m is is very large, then, then the typicality theory shows that the most probable sequence is that when this F1 to, from F1 to FR, which, which is denoted by F, is equal to the original probability distribution, which is, which is, uh, which is just a P equal to P1 from P1 to PR. So, so this is actually a very interesting result, uh, very interesting re result. And, um, and so it, it's, uh, it's actually related to the concept of the channel entropy. So if you look at this, this reference. And, uh, and so this, this, so actually, so this is a typical set. So how about the, the probability, which is uh, close to the typical set, but it's not equal to the, but it's not a, a exactly the typical set. So, so for example, so suppose we have just a, so called, suppose this random variable has just a, two different outcomes. So we can use just a single, uh, single, um, single uh, parameter f one 
to denote the, the final uh, results of this uh, final statistical results. So, so the, we see that the typical set correspond to, to the F1 equal to P1. So for the, and the, uh, the, the probability of the other, the other sequences, they can be uh, actually described by this expression. So this expression, you can see that it's, it's the, um, so, it, so, the, so it's just related to the relative entropy between the F and P. So, so we see that, so in this expression, uh, we see that as M, that is the, uh, that is the number of this uh, realization, as M is very large, so the, actually the width of this distribution is become very, very small. So mean that the, so as M increases, uh, so the, so most, uh, so mo most probable sequence is just a typical sequence. Now we can have some analog between the theory of classical typicality and the typicality of sequential pure variants. So, so the analog can, can be seen clearly by this, the two equations. In the first equation, we can have this, uh, this identity, meaning that all the, so all the probability, uh, the, pro the summation, of, summation of the probability for all the possible sequences that are equal to one. And uh, for, for all these sequences, the, the sequences, the, the most important one are just the typical sequence in that it's a typical set. And for the, for the sequential pure variance, we have not just a single probability, we actually have a, have a diagonal operators, diagonal operators which has, uh, so for each diagonal elements, they can be regarded as a, as a probability, which, which means that they correspond to, a, to some statistical this P. But, uh, but since the uh, measurement of uh, operator this M, they, they are diagonal operators. So, so, so they can have actually the different set of the typical, uh, typical sequences, which means that, uh, which means that they, uh, this, uh, uh, so that's the different, which means the difference is that uh, instead of a single typical set, they have, uh, they have a set of different typical sets corresponding exactly to the different projections, which is, uh, which arises in the asymptotic limits. Now let's look at how we derive this. So we can, we can write the, uh, the power, the m's power of the phi, we can, uh, the phi is equal to, to the summation of all the MR, and uh, and we can uh, expand this expression according to the multinomial theorem because this all these different uh, measurement operators they 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 commute with each other, and uh, and we can uh, since and we can just uh, uh, write explicitly the uh, expression for the all the different MR. And uh, by by you by some very similar uh, the derivation uh, to the to the classical typicality, we can find the final results. The final results is we can look at at this slide. So so final result is that the the power the m's power of phi is equal to is equal to this one. So what does this one mean? So this one means that, so if we look at the, for the infinite, the case of the infinite M, so, so this expression means that the, the phi M is reduced to the summation of S different sets of, of typical sequence of pure variance leading to the different projection operators. For the large but finite M, the phi M is approximately the summation of the S Gaussians around the different typical sequences. So to have a clear, uh, clear uh, vision of this expression, so we can we can still use the, the single case which which is uh, which has only two outcomes. For two outcome P of M, we, we can have a single parameter F1 to denote the, the final result. So 
So suppose we have this, uh, this, uh, this, this four typical sequence correspond to the F11 and F21, F31 and F41. And uh, so, so the, so this expression can be just, uh, um, just uh, understood from this paper. So, uh, so, so this means that, so we, we can see that uh, this, uh, this figure is composed of four different peaks. So a actually each peak, the weights of each peak is, uh, is actually inversely proportional to the, to the uh, measurements, so the, to the, to the measurement times, that is to the M. So if M is very large, that means that the, the weights of each peak is very small, which means that the different, the different peaks can be very separate. So that means that suppose we have uh, find a, a, special, uh, a special sequence of the sequential pure VM. So, so it will most probably produce a single projection. So suppose we have this, uh, this, uh, this F, which is located very near to F11, it will most probably produce a, a projection which corresponds to the P1. And for practical uh, experiments, so they, they actually, they can divide several separating areas. Uh, so for example, if, if the measurement results is uh, F, if F1 is located with this, uh, this is, for example, this green region, we can, uh, we can think that the, it actually has performed the projective measurements corresponding to P1. If this, if this F1 located within this shaded area of this, uh, of this the second area, so it can be regarded as, as a projective measurement of the P2 and, uh, and the likewise. So actually we can derive the condition for, for the two Gaussians around the FJFT to, to be step, well separate. Actually, so this means that the measurement times should be larger than some, some constant, which is, uh, which is determined uh, just by the uh, structures, um, only by the structures of the pure VM. Uh, sorry, if I don't like, uh, because we are kind of slowly going uh, like out of time. Like how much time do you need? Like it's sort of five, 10 minutes or right? Okay, okay, or it's uh, maybe five so, to 10 minutes of uh, just- uh, uh, Great, okay, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay, finally, so I will discuss how to basically realize such a sequential, such uh, realize the sequential pure VMs to simulate the PMs. So, uh, so the step is, uh, so, so this we should use the sign spring gravitation of the quantum channel, which means that we use a, a single ancillary to, uh, to couple with, uh, with the targets. And we, uh, we just let the ancillary starts with, starts from some space and rotate it by some, by some, uh, uh, by, by some uh, unitary evolution. And uh, we let the ancillary target system evolve and, uh, and this kind of uh, pure debating Hamiltonian for some time. And finally rotate the ancillary by some rotation and make a projective measurements of the PM in the basics. Okay, so with this, uh, with this model, we can realize actually this, uh, this pure VM, uh, which, which has two uh, measurement operators m plus and m minus, and uh, and by analyzing this uh, structure of this m plus and m minus, and uh, that is the way uh, we can realize the arbitrary PMs on this d-dimensional quantum system. So the parameter we can tune is that the delta phi, and uh, and actually the operator bt means that uh, the uh, the eigenvalue of the bt that is the omega one. And uh, from omega one to omega d, this are uh, all the problems that we can tune. So, so with this setup, we can actually simulate an uh, arbitrary PM um, for a d-dimensional system. And uh, as a simple example, we can we can make uh, measurements on on the modular number excitation modular excitation number of the bosonic mode. So, so such a kind of measurement is important to the 
change the error syndromes for the personic mode. For example, so, so if we can measure the even or the parity of the uh, of the personic mode, we can uh, we can make the error, we can just uh, extract the error syndrome of the simple this uh, error correction code of the of the personic mode. So so if we want to extract the error syndrome of the high world Q quantum error correction code, so we need to make some uh, make some general module one expression number. So actually, the experiments they so they have realized this this kind of uh, even all the parity number measurements by just use a, a single mapping between the parity to the to the states of the ancilla by using a single short measurements. But uh, but to uh, but to measure the modular general modular expression number of our percent model actually hasn't been uh, it's a well, it's a kind of a tricky uh, tricky task and it hasn't been experimentally realized and actually using using this uh, our scheme uh, use this scheme we can actually just uh, uh, just use the sequential QVM to to, to realize an uh, an arbitrary module expansion number measurements. And so the only the only thing we need to do is just the way we just to to use the uh, to to use the sequential measurements instead of this single single short measurements. And to tune the uh, tune the difference of phi uh, phi one and phi two and the interaction time. Okay, so for the details, you can refer to this reference. But the final result is that we can use this scheme to make an arbitrary general module section number measurements of the Poisonic mode. Okay, so let's, now let's briefly, briefly conclude the talk. So we have studied the sequential pure VMs with the normal and the commuting measurement operators. So we find that the, 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 the PMs uh, is emergent from the sequential pure VMs in the asymptotic limits. And the selective PMs, they just come from the different typical sequences of the pure VMs. And we found this, this game has applications in, in simulating arbitrary PMs for finite and infinite dimensional system. So uh, our open question is that, so, so since in this talk we have uh, restrictions on the on the form of the POVM, POVM, that is, they have a, this kind of special kind of measurement operators. So, so our natural question is that, so how about we have, if we have general measurement operators, for example, if we have the non-normal operator measurement operators or the non-commuting measurement operators, so does the typicality still apply? So it, this is an interesting open problem. And another problem is that, so, so we can just uh, so we can we explore more application of this scheme in this talk. That is, we use it to for the initialization of readouts and the feedback control. Feedback control also includes the uh, quantum error correction. So that will be very interesting uh, directions to uh, to 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 follow. Okay. So finally, I would like to acknowledge the support from the uh, findings and. Uh, I know that I, uh, so, so I have some uh, open positions for Kostro and uh, our research assistants and exchange students. So if you are interested, welcome to contact me. Okay, so, the, uh, so with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. And so thank you for your attention. Um, uh, thank you, Ben, for, for a great talk. Uh, yes, we have time for questions or comments to the speaker. Uh, yeah, I, I have some technical problems on my device, so I don't see who uh, who's, who wants to ask a question. So please, maybe just unmute yourself or uh, and ask a question. Yeah, if you if you want. Can I ask question? Sure, sure. Uh, actually, uh, I mean, please forgive me if I don't understand uh, you properly. Uh, mm -hmm. In your mm -hmm. presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. You got actually a asymptotic result for selective projective measurement from the typical sequence of POVM. But yes. what kind of actually 
what cause one single projective measurement from the sequen actually sequential of POBM. For example, if you have like a sequential of POBM, but mm -hmm. what kind of actually things actually select one, one projective measurement? Mm. Because for here, next slide, S, number of S. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. So if I understand correctly, your question is, uh, so, so you mean, uh, so, so you mean what kind of uh, typical sequence, uh, what, what kind of typical sequence of this POVM produce a specific PM, right? Right, right. right? right. right. Okay, okay. So this is a actually a very crucial question. So, uh, so actually I do not, uh, I may see it in this talk. So, so this, uh, so this actually, so these typical sequences are, are solely determined by the structures of the this measurement operators. So, so if we look at this this expression, so this, this expression um, with uh, this, this expression of this measurement operator in the matrix form. So, so we can see that so the typical sequence just correspond to uh, to the to actually to the probability distributions. Uh, which is determined by the matrix elements of the different columns. So, so, so you can see that the, the typical sequence FK, they are just determined by the, for example, the, the, the square of the absolute value of the C1K and the, and the CRK square. So, yeah, does that answer your question? Uh, can you show next slide? You Next slide. Right. Yeah, here like S, S is uh, so how we can it, how we can actually determine S. This is it. You you can choose oh, S, S, right? Okay, S, S is uh, uh, you can think S is uh, mm, S is also de determined by this this structure of this matrix. So this the S is just the number of this this uh, column of vectors. So, so look at this, uh, uh, this matrix C. So S is just, uh, uh, just uh, the dimension of, uh, just the number of the column vectors. But in the end, actually, uh, uh, after like series of measurements of M reduce uh, projective, uh, the part, uh, POBM to one single projective measurement? Uh, right, right. But what actually cause, uh, what actually make uh, the one single measurement to, to be to be correct? A special one single measurement actually single projective measurement is selected. Okay, okay. So so um, so actually so in, in so in experimental realizations. So for example, so. Uh, so if we make a sequential measurements, so for each measurement, we, uh, so we, we, after each measurement, we should record the results. So after, so after M different realization of the measurements, so we have uh, M different, for example, M different results. So we just uh, uh, make some statistical uh, uh, anal analysis of the measurement results and find, so for example, the number of the, for example, the, the number of the, a number of results corresponding to the uh, measurement operator M1, and also the number of measurements corresponding to the other different measurement operators. That is, we, de we can determine the, uh, the kind of the, uh, the kind of the F correspond. Uh, so F, yes. So we can, we kind of, kind of, so for each, each round of the experiment, so we can de determine a corresponding F, right? So F is in this expression. So uh, what you can look at in this figure, the F is just, uh, you can think of as a single F1. So you, right? so it eventually become like a single F1. Single F1. Yeah, so, so for example, so you can, for each round of measurements, you can determine a single F1. 
So, so for example, if we have m difference, uh, m sequential, uh, m sequential uh, POVMs with so for each POVM we have uh, two different outcomes. So we can make uh, so we can uh, so we can just uh, record the number of uh, number of uh, plus measurements and the number of uh, minus measurements and just uh, uh, and then we compute the F1. And so so compute uh, F1 we can just uh, find which so where is where is located. So if it's located, for example, located very close to F11, then it will produce a projective measurement P1, right? So if it's located in the other positions, they will- But we cannot control position. actually which one, like F from between, among actually F1, F2, F3, F4. Yeah, yeah, so yes, we cannot control it because because right. it's uh, actually it's uh, kind of uh, uh, probabilistic, but uh, but the but the inter but the uh, interesting point is that if the measurement time is large, that is if m is large, which means that the uh, this means that the uh, the distribution peaks is very uh, is very uh, sharp, means that so almost uh, almost all the measurement results will. Uh, very close to the typical sequence, but which typical sequence is just uh, it just uh, determined by the probability distribution. So we cannot determine the trivial. Uh, just uh, we cannot determine it beforehand. Thank you very much. Very interesting. So we cannot uh, we cannot uh, determine it. we cannot uh, uh, just uh, uh, deterministically know it because it's just uh, like uh, just like if you make a projecting measurements. Uh, on a single qubit state. So the, the, the result of uh, obtaining zero and one is determined by that's the, uh, the square amplitude of the peak given the superposition. Right. Yeah. Um, a, a quick related question. So I understand that this number of repetitions M has to be somehow much larger than this S for this procedure, this number of, uh, so I understand that S is like, one can one should think of it as like like number of outcomes essentially, right? Or um, this S. Uh, so you mean the S? Effective the number S, of outcomes S, 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 of, the, of the projective measurement that we realize, right? Uh, so S is so S is not so S is not equal to the number of outcomes. So S is actually. But only determined by the structures of the measurement operators. So let me quickly show this. So right, right. But like, but in, but in the end, you simulate some projective measurement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it the case that okay, maybe I, I missed it. Like, like, where the number of outcomes of this effective projective measurement uh, pops out effect uh, in the end? Because so you, 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 okay. you approximately okay. realize some some pr projective measurements, right? When you right, concatenate right, right. your channel, so right. it will have some number of outcomes. So maybe I, I missed it. Like, isn't it the case that this S is effectively the number of outcomes somehow, or I'm um, oh. of this projective measurement, or it's N, it's N there, the next. Oh. So I do not quite your question. Well, but so, like in the end, you realize some projective measurements, you say, right? Right, right, right. So this projective measurement uh, is characterized by some pro like projectors that are uh, Krauss operators, right? And there are some number of them, right? Right, right. So what is uh, their number? Is it just S uh, or well, S, yeah. Uh, no. Like here, see? Yeah. It's like so. So so S. So S is uh, you mean what's S, right? No, but okay, maybe I. Okay, I don't want to sort of. Uh, okay, like okay, there, there are just. Some, Maybe those are technical questions, and uh, unfortunately, myself, I am sort of on holidays, and I should go. Maybe I follow up with some. I, I don't want to disturb. Maybe some other people want to ask questions. I will follow up 
with my questions via email okay if you don't mind like uh yeah uh because yeah maybe 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 others want to ask something sorry for oh sorry uh, so because i so I, I i still do not quite get your question so maybe we can discuss later yeah. exactly exactly okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, okay, are there uh, more questions to Wen Long? Uh, um. uh, just a quick question. Uh, so in this practical mm -hmm. application that you showed, uh, mm -hmm. right, like in which you replace this one measurement with your sequential scheme, how large this M should be like in this uh, error correction kind of context? Here. Oh, so your question is how to realize this? No, uh, I mean you need uh, to repeat this measurement n times. Like, what determines how how large m should be? So, is is there some accuracy scaling? Is this like? Uh, so 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 you mean so what's the evolution time, right? Like right? You say that you need to repeat this scheme like m times. Okay, okay, okay. So so, n, so what determines m? Okay, so so actually, so the so the m um, so the m we should choose is determined on the accuracy you you want to simulate the PM. So and so the m so it's generally if m is large, then then the simulation accuracy is very very high. But but the, um, but if m is uh, is small, then then it's uh, so so if we look at this. This figure, so okay, so M, so it's like exponential in M also, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so, I so see. The, mm, okay, all right. Any more questions? Okay, I just have maybe one general one. So, do, in the future, do you want to explore, uh, like what happens when you don't assume nor, uh, normality of those uh, cross operators and yeah, uh, yeah. then study, uh, like. Proper non commutative analog of, of this. Do I understand? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the still open uh, problem because, uh, because uh, so, for example, if we do not have the commuting condition, then the, the, uh, the sequence of the measurement operators. So, so actually, the order of the different measurement operators they matter. So, so it's uh, uh, so it's quite become quite oh. complicated. Right. Right. Sure. Thank you, Ben Long. Yeah. Many thanks mm -hmm. for for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, and uh, and thank you all the thank you all for the attention. Yeah. If you want to discuss with Ben Long, maybe stick around. But okay, it's also quite late for him. Many thanks again. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Hi. Thank you, bye. Thank you.